The Golf GTI 2014 scores points with a new 2-litre TSI engine. This engine already complies with future Euro 6 emission standards. Moreover, it can be installed in vehicles with the modular transverse matrix concept. Soon it will show its strengths in other Volkswagen models. This Volkswagen TV training session will give you all the necessary information for repairing the 2-litre TSI engine. You can identify the 2-litre TSI engine at the first glance. The oil filling cap is no longer positioned in the cylinder head cover, but in the timing chain cover. Another identifying feature is the oil pressure switches. They are located on the ancillaries carrier below the oil filter. They activate at different pressures and monitor both pressure stages of the oil pump. In addition, a control valve for the piston cooling nozzles is now located at the front edge of the carrier. The valve controls cooling of the piston crown by switching the nozzles on and off. You can also identify the new engine by its oil pan. It's now made of plastic instead of sheet metal. The vibration damper is connected to the sprocket wheel for the timing chain and the crankshaft via a securing bolt. When the vibration damper has to be removed, fix the sprocket wheel and the crankshaft in position. Use the tool T10531 for this. It's made up of several parts. The holder, the tensioning pin, the turning tool, and the flange nut. Use this tool for older vehicles as well. T10531 replaces the former T10368 tool. When you have to remove the vibration damper, first set it in the TDC position using the T10355 counterhold tool. Match the notch on the vibration damper with the arrow mark on the timing chain cover. It is located in the 4 o'clock position. Now loosen the screw by at most half a turn. Next remove the two securing bolts from the timing chain cover. These bolts must not be used again when reinstalling the vibration damper. They have to be replaced. Now use the new T10531 tool. First apply the tool holder at the vibration damper. Tighten the knurled screws hand tight. Now completely unscrew the bolt for the vibration damper. Screw the tensioning pin into the crankshaft and tighten it hand tight with a 12mm open end wrench. Now screw the tensioning bolt hand tight. The sprocket wheel is now in tight position at the crankshaft. Remove the vibration damper by unscrewing both knurled screws.
If you have to turn the crankshaft without the vibration damper, slide the turning tool loosely on the tensioning pin and tighten the flange nut hand tight. In the 2.0-litre TSI engine, pencil ignition coils are installed. If you have to remove these coils, use the obligatory A1 T10 530 tool. First, unscrew the securing bolt on the ignition coil. Insert the T10 530 tool into the hole and tighten it with the clamping nut. Now you can pull out the ignition coil. Move the ignition coil straight and slightly support it with your hand. This way you prevent the ignition coil from getting damaged while pulling it out. There is also a new tool for checking the valve timing of the 2.0-litre TSI engine. The VAS 6341 dial gauge with the T10-170A adapter. When you want to check the valve timing, first turn the crankshaft at the vibration damper in the direction of engine rotation using the SW24 socket bit. Turn it until both marks are almost at the top. Now remove the spark plug from the first cylinder. Screw the adapter for the dial gauge hand tight in the spark plug thread. Now insert the dial gauge into the adapter up to the stop. Tighten the dial gauge with the clamping nut. Next, turn the crankshaft slowly in the direction of engine rotation. Continue turning until the dial gauge needle no longer moves. Now the piston is at its top dead center. If you turn the crankshaft too much, the dial gauge needle will go down again. If this happens, do not rotate the crankshaft back against the direction of engine rotation. Instead, continue to turn the crankshaft in the direction of engine rotation by two turns until the needle again shows the maximum deflection. Now the arrow mark in the lower part of the timing chain cover points to the notch of the vibration damper. The marks on the camshafts and the cylinder head cover must match in the same way. The 2.0-litre TSI engine comes with a newly developed cylinder head. Important new features are the camshaft adjustment and the variable valve timing for the exhaust camshaft. Using the valve lift changeover, it's possible for the valves to open and close via two different cam profiles. The charge cycle in each cylinder is optimally controlled.
This particularly improves the charge cycle in the lower speed range. The variable valve timing then switches to the smaller exhaust cam profile. The valves lift and lower now with a smaller valve lift. If more power is requested at a higher speed, the full valve lift will still be required. It is again switched over to the larger exhaust cam profile. For the 2-litre TSI engine, there are some particular features when installing the camshafts. You can install the inlet camshaft in the cylinder head as before. However, the exhaust camshaft must not be inserted into the cylinder head as before. When being mounted, the cylinder head cover would press on the cam unit. The cam elements themselves and the cover would then be damaged. You have to install the exhaust camshaft in the cylinder head cover and move it to its basic setting there. To manage this, the cam units are moved in such a way that they run on the small cam. For this purpose, the outer sliders must be moved to the inside and the inner sliders to the outside. Therefore, mount the cylinder head cover only when the exhaust camshaft is installed. The shaft must not be displaced.